All right, so in the last video in this series, I kind of gave you a really high level overview of what full stack development is. And now I'm gonna dive in more to the front end part of full stack and kind of explain the, diff the different concepts um, and still try to keep it high level. I promise I'm gonna actually start talking about like coding and JavaScript and HTML in a bit. But again, I'm just starting at a high level and kind of diving down into the various concepts so that you have a better understanding of some of this stuff. So the first thing I want to talk about is how does an application actually work? So on your computer, you might have various types of applications, right? You might have like Notepad or VS Code, or you may have a Chrome browser installed. All of these applications are basically built up of something called source files, okay? So source files are the things that us developers type out manually so that the computer knows what to do. And in a general sense, in most programming languages, these source files are basically just a list of commands that we tell a computer how to basically run. And I think it's kind of good to start off with maybe explaining a little bit about JavaScript. I'm not going to talk about any type of keywords or syntax, but just know that with all programming languages, there's typically something called like a grammar that makes up your language. So in an example here, so to kind of look at an analogy, like let's look at English, okay? English is a language and that language consists of a particular grammar, right? So if I made a sentence called like the dog barked, and then I also wanted to add it to a sentence called like John bought some candy. All right, so although those two sentences are very um, unrelated, there is an actual like grammar that we follow, right? So there's, first of all, there's certain ways that we structure sentences. We start with a capital T, when we start a sentence, any type of proper name or proper noun is capitalized. At the end of a sentence, we put a period. We have a specific spelling that all of these words must be. And that is kind of like the grammar or the syntax of the English language. Now, if you were to go through here and like forget to add periods, or you kept this lowercase, kept this lowercase, and maybe you misspelled some of the words, the sentence is no longer proper, right? There's no way, well, in this case, maybe someone can understand what you're trying to say. But for a computer, when they see this, this is bad grammar or bad syntax, so it's going to break. And we're going to see this a lot when we actually like inspect, you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But again, I'm just trying to give you a high level overview. So again, let's kind of go back and understand how us humans read through these sentences word by word, sentence by sentence, and just use that as an analogy of how a computer does the same thing. So if we have a sentence like this, the dog barked, John bought some candy, and that's just repeated over and over again. The way that we read it, at least um, English, is you start from left to right, right? So you start here and you start reading the words left to right. And then once you get to the end of the line, you go into the next line, left to right. So it turns out that this process, this left to right, up to down um, order, is actually how computers process computer programming languages. So to kind of give you a more concrete example, we can look at the script here. So I have some JavaScript loaded up. And if I want to run this do a debugger, I could kind of give you an example of how this works. Um, let me just go ahead and add a couple of things. All right, so we have a script here. And what we're going to do is I'm using VS Code. And don't worry, I'm going to explain like what all this stuff is if you're new to VS Code. But the main thing I'm trying to highlight is that a computer, when you run a program, it's going to run through your language from top to bottom, left to right. So let's just go ahead and click this run and debug button. And I'm going to click Node.js just because that's easier. And if you see here, you don't even need to know what this stuff is doing. I'm just highlighting the, the principle that I'm getting at is when I run the debugger in VS Code, I'm prompted with this control panel up here, which allows me to step over the code exactly how the computer is going to interpret it. So if you see here, it stopped on the first line, put a line break in the debugger so that'll pause. So if I were to step through this, you'll see that it runs through every line one by one and it starts changing things and doing different things, right? All of these lines are actually statements that the computer actually runs and interprets. And using these statements, you can do things on your machine, like read from a file system, write files to a file system, make network requests, etc., make buttons, execute some code if a user clicks on a button. Um, but the idea is the order of which you write these commands is really important. And that is why I'm trying to highlight that, right? As you can see, as I'm running through, like these, these things are printing out down here. These, uh, what we call strings are printing out, but in a nutshell, just understand that the order of how you do things is exactly how a computer 
also executes the scripts. Now, this same idea applies to CSS, it applies to HTML. The order of everything is really important. So let's actually look at the HTML for a second. So this, we're looking at an HTML file, and don't worry, I'm gonna talk about HTML files in a second, but just note that the way that we structured the HTML, the order of where we put these tags is super important. And more specifically, for HTML, it's a little bit more complex. So I wanna give you a high level overview of how HTML kind of works. Um, there's something in, computer science called like a tree data structure. And there's a lot of like algorithms really to tra like traversing trees. It turns out that a tree data structure is very similar to like a family tree, right? So you might have like your great grandmother, it might have nine children and each of, not it, her, she, your great grandmother might have nine children and all of those children could potentially produce more children. So if you look at that and visualize like a, a family tree, that is exactly how HTML is structured, all right? So the order of all this stuff, the nesting, you notice how we do indentation here? It turns out that all of these tags actually have children embedded in it. So if I were to kind of collapse some of these, maybe I can kind of show you that. So HTML is built of a different tags, and inside those tags, you can typically, typically nest additional tags. So if you see here, we have an HTML tag, and inside of that, we nest some a head tag and a body tag. And if you expand the body, we then nested even more tags like HTML and divs. So then going back to that family tree analogy, HTML is like your great grandmother and then body is like your grandmother and then div is like your mom. And then if you were to put anything in here, that might be like you, but it can continuously, <laughs> I know that analogy is kind of silly, but you can continuously keep nesting children inside of these containers and that is basically what I'm trying to get at. So like, let me just do that. That's kind of another good example. You're gonna see a lot of HTML that's kind of similar to this, where you have a lot of nested, right? So you might say, okay, Cody, dude, like you're talking about tree data structures and tree algorithms. Um, I'm a beginner. And I kind of agree, like the whole idea of like telling you about what a tree is and how the DOM or the HTML makes up a tree might be a little bit more advanced, but it is important to understand. So if I were to save this, and go over to my browser. Inside of Google Chrome, uh, there's a, a DevTools panel that you can use. And I'm also gonna explain this in this series as well and kind of talk about some of the most important aspects of it. But in this DevTools, you can see here that that same HTML structure that we talked about is highlighted here and you can start diving into it, right? So I'm at the top level node here and I can slowly dive into the various parts of my HTML like this, All right? So the div has a bunch of cards. Each card might have a title and a body and stuff like that. So it's kind of important to make sure you understand like this tree structure, although it might be really confusing right now, it's gonna be really useful to understand down the road. But yeah, don't don't feel too confused about all this because I'm gonna cover this DOM tree stuff further on. Um, and the last thing, again, I'm just trying to highlight that the order of how you write HTML and the syntax and the grammar, all of this stuff has a particular way that you have to write stuff, right? You notice that it has brackets and there's also like ending brackets. This is all part of the language. So you just have to kind of learn it and memorize it, unfortunately, because without doing that, you're gonna get kind of stuck and lost. All right, and the last thing I kind of want to talk about is CSS. So again, the main topic like in this video is all about ordering. The ordering of everything is super important. So in CSS, this is another type of language that you can write to basically apply styles to the elements that you're seeing on your web page, right? So if we go back here, you can notice that Hello World is in red, Sally's in red, and stuff like that. So the ability to style all these DOM elements comes from using CSS, right? Which is cascading style sheet. But the thing I'm trying to highlight in this video is that the way that you write your CSS, the order of the execution matters, right? So the computer is gonna see this, it's gonna parse out the CSS, it's gonna fail if you have anything messed up, like the syntax. For example, if I forget to put a semicolon here, Notice that you get some red squigglies, that means there's an error. So you need to make sure you understand the syntax of CSS because there's a particular way you have to write this to make it work inside your computer. And again, you just have to memorize this stuff. But the thing I'm trying to get at is the whole thing with CSS is that you can write styles and then later on, you can overwrite those styles with different things. So like for an example, I'm gonna have a block here that makes the color red in the font size 12. So if I go back to my web page and refresh it, notice that the font is a little bit smaller than it was before. But because of the way the programming languages work and the order of execution really makes a difference, with CSS, I can simply just apply 
another style to overwrite the font size, and that will increase the font of all of my cards, but not necessarily change the colors of the various components. All right, so all of that talk, again, was just a high level overview of like how programs are written. You have source files. Those source files need to follow a particular syntax or grammar that the computer can interpret. And then the computer, once you've, you know, tell it to run with this file, it's going to run through some instructions, top to bottom, left to right, and start running different things. Like maybe it's applying styles to your HTML. Maybe it's building up a DOM tree using your HTML, or maybe it's adding some type of interactivity to your elements. So the last thing I want to kind of mention on is as your application gets larger and larger, you're going to have to start splitting up your code into multiple files so that it's manageable. Okay. So on the left here, we have like a file browser and typically that's just a normal, like if you're using windows, like my computer, you know, you can like dive into folders. This is the same view as like that, or if you're using Mac, maybe finder where you have files and those files might import other files, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of what we end up doing as we build larger applications. We split up our logic into various files and then we import them all into like a main starting file that has access to all these. And to kind of give you a more concrete example, let's look at the index HTML. So when I try to load this HTML file in Google Chrome, it's actually going to fetch a couple of things, right? So first of all, the computer is going to look at this file and it's going to run through it and start executing some of these DOM nodes. But some of them, which are kind of interesting to talk about, are the link tag here, which is basically going to fetch a style sheet and apply styles to the web page. And then it's going to also bring in some JavaScript code so that we can start doing some type of dynamic functionality. Um, so just to highlight that, like I could comment out. And by the way, commenting is basically telling the computer to not actually execute this part of code. So I'm going to comment out the line that says, you know, import the style sheet. And if I refresh the page, notice that all the styles are gone. So to further exemplify that, let's go to our network page, our, our network tab here, and just clear it out. So the one thing I want to highlight, remember my key point is like, you can break a program down into multiple source files, and we kind of import them all together to achieve what we need to achieve. If I refresh my page, notice that the Chrome browser first loads an index.html page here, okay? So that is just telling it, hey, load this index file and start running it. And once it starts running it, it's going to see those script tags and see the style link tags, the ones that are up here, and it's going to further start fetching some more things, right? So if I do it again with the style sheet included, you'll notice that it did the HTML file first, but then it started loading some other things. Like it loaded the style.css, it loaded the helpers.js, and then it loaded the script.js. And also notice that this is in the exact order that we told the code to do it, right? If I go over back to the code, notice that it imported the style sheet first, and then it imported helpers, and then it imported scripts. Because the order of how this stuff runs is super important to understand. All right, so the very last thing I want to talk about, kind of building upon that key piece of information and how we split up our program into smaller programs. When you get more experienced, what you end up doing is you go online to figure out if someone else has already solved a problem that you are trying to solve yourself. For example, you might want to pull in a library called Bootstrap that helps you build out common UI components really quickly. So uh, on the internet, all these people, all these other developers are making projects and libraries and frameworks, and they're publishing them somewhere. And often as we're building our applications, if you're a beginner, you might not be doing that. But when you become more experienced, you realize, I don't want to have to keep implementing all this stuff myself. Like if I want a drop down, why not just grab it from someone else who's already put in the work? and put in the effort to make it. So that is another aspect of like open source and grabbing third party modules. We're going to dive into that in a bit, but that's super important to understand. Like as your application grows, you're going to be grabbing bits and pieces of other code from other people using like a package manager or using maybe a CDN. Again, these are terms I'm going to explain, but I just want you to understand that there's like, <laughs> this gets bigger and bigger and we build upon something small to become something large. Cool. All right. I think I hit on all the key points that I kind of wanted to talk about. I'm sure there's something that I left off, but at this point, I think you have a good understanding of what full stack is. I think you should have a decent understanding of how like a front end application might be built. Although I didn't explain like what the heck these things are or what, like, what is this syntax? What does this mean? Or what are these commands do? 
just understand that we built an application, our web application, using various technologies. And we also split those up into various files so that we can manage our code and make it more comprehensible when we come back later to try to use it. All right, so the next video in the series, I'm actually gonna dive into HTML and start showing you how you can build out a really basic website using HTML.